Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn. Let's go over Amonkhet preview season. get into the cards today, let's go over one of the new mechanics we haven't talked about yet. It's called Aftermath. Do you guys remember those split cards that were rumored to be real a couple weeks ago? Well those were actually real and that's awesome! So here's a real card that actually has the effect on it. The example of this card here is called Destined and then the side example is called Lead. Alright, the normal effect is one colorless and one black for an instant. Target creature gains plus one plus zero oh, and indestructible until end of turn. Okay, so the Aftermath effect only happens whenever the card goes into the graveyard. That can be from discarding or using the the card itself. So you can actually use the Aftermath ability in the same turn if you have enough mana. The difference here is that Aftermath is in green. Lead is three colorless and one green. All creatures able to block target creature this turn do so. The reason the Aftermath card is actually sideways is so that whenever you have it in your graveyard, you can actually turn the card sideways and have it poking out from the side. Although the viability of this with having multiple Aftermath cards in your graveyard, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. From a flavor perspective, it works. From a viability standpoint on this particular card, the mechanic is actually great. It allows you to get double value for a single card that have really synergistic abilities with one another. The only caveat out here is Aftermath seems to be a bit more expensive. Is that a lot for a combat trick where they have to block your indestructible creature? Well, maybe on second thought, that's actually pretty good. I could see this definitely as a combat trick in the standard format, where you're trying to break up particular stubborn board states. It's also a limited bomb, especially in a token-heavy environment like the one we're getting into. So I'd guess I'd say the 4 mana is worth it. It's a great limited combat trick, probably a good draft pick too, and it may see some really fringe standard play. Again, being able to break up those stubborn board states is very important. Overall, Aftermath is pretty impressive. Next up, going along with mechanics, we're also going to talk about negative 1, negative 1 counters. They are back, and they couldn't have come at a sooner time. The gods of Amonkhet are also indestructible, just like the gods of Theros. So that means there's basically three ways to kill a god. You counter it before it gets to the field, you exile it while it's on the field, and you give it negative 1, negative 1 counters until it reaches 0 and dies. So while we're on the topic, let's spoil the first one. The red god Hazareth the Fervent. It's a three colorless, one red mana, legendary creature god. With indestructible and haste. Hazareth can't attack or block unless you have one or fewer cards in hand. Pay two colorless and one red mana, discard a card, Hazareth deals two damage to each opponent this turn. Oh, by the way, it's also a 5-4, just in case you didn't notice that. Okay, I like this a lot. The gods on Theros needed the threshold of devotion to be able to be activated and be able to swing. On Amonkhet, there's a similar mechanic, but it's not necessarily with devotion, and the gods aren't enchantments. Instead, we'll have to rely on a more mechanically driven component, like amount of cards in hand and things like that. I'm assuming in the future, the green one will have to say something about mana. But that's just me spitballing. But from a flavor perspective, this red god is actually pretty awesome because it's basically saying, play everything and then play me. And in a red strategy in Limited, you're especially curving out. So I think that's very important to have a turn four kind of bomb come in with haste. And even if it doesn't come in with haste on turn four or three, it's still gonna have some mid and late game interaction with the discard ability. Again, in Limited, it's very important to have cards with sustainability throughout the entire match. And that discard ability is sweet. It's also an activated Madness trigger, which we'll probably see standard play. Especially since a lot of the Madness decks, as soon as they curve out, they don't have a hand. So we have Hazarot here to like get in for that damage. Also, each opponent? This card is begging for a commander deck. Gets brewing, ladies and gentlemen, because it's coming out very soon. So limited, obvious bomb. Draft, obvious bomb. Standard, we'll probably see it in a Madness deck. And in Modern, we may see something at that 4 drop rate. I'm always tepid of Modern because the power level is so different. But knowing red decks in the Modern format, being able to curve out and then play a 5-4 uh, hasty, Seems pretty good. I'm really happy with the Red God. I think it checks all the boxes. So enough about the Red God, let's move on to the Trials. Trial of Knowledge is three colorless and one blue for an enchantment. When Trial of Knowledge enters the battlefield, draw three cards and discard a card. By itself, that ability alone is pretty great and limited. But this card gets pushed. When a cartouche enters the battlefield, return Trial of Knowledge to its owner's hand. What? So you get to draw three, discard, and then when another card type enters the battlefield, it's bounced back to your hand for another cycle of this? That is insanity. While I don't think this will see any standard play, I think in limited and draft, it is an amazing interaction. So let's talk about a cartouche that's actually going to interact with it. Cartouche of Solidarity is one white mana for an enchantment or a cartouche. Enchant creature you control. When Cartouche of Solidarity enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one warrior token that has vigilance. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one, and first strike? Holy pushed card, Batman. Okay, let me get this straight. For one white mana, you create a 1-1 one, one warrior with vigilance. Then you pump up another dude and give him first strike. Then if you have a trial on the field, it also interacts with something else. That is hilarious. Not only is this card good by itself, the value it brings to trial of knowledge is ridiculous. Also, this card is a common. 
a common. So be expected to pull a trial of knowledge as an uncommon and then a cartoose of solidarity as a common in the same pack. That is legit insanity. So for five mana, draw three cards, discard a card, make a dude with vigilance, then pump up another dude, then return the card that you actually drew the three cards with back to your hand. Huh? That is good, ladies and gentlemen. Great in limited and great in draft if you can get it. I'm not so sure about the standard viability since it's a two card combo. Although here's looking at you, fellow our guardian in Sahili Rai. But I do think it's very push, and that is awesome. Next up we've got a crocodile, crocodile of the crossing. Three colorless and one green mana for a 5-4 haste crocodile. Now you may think that crocodiles shouldn't have haste, but then I would like to point out that the Nile crocodile can actually run up to 22 miles an hour. So you know, nightmare fuel forever. When Crocodile of the Crossing enters the battlefield, put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature you control. Okay, so a four mana, five, four green creature isn't that new, but giving it haste is actually interesting, and being able to negative one, negative one counter on your side of the field is either flavorful, a disadvantage to the power, or synergistic with an ability we haven't seen just yet. I'm probably leaning towards that last one, but we'll definitely need to see more cards in the set to see if that's viable. But in limited and draft, this is a great pick. Very powerful board presence and very quick, obviously, with haste. Standard and modern, though, probably not. So let's move on to a red card, Flame Blade Adept. It's a one mana one two jackal with menace. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, Flame Blade Adept gets plus one plus oh until end of turn. Wow. Madness and discard abilities in the same standard format? That is ridiculous. This may actually see some standard play, especially in the madness decks. And in limited, it's always a great pick. This card is actually very reminiscent of a uh, insolent neonate from Shadows Over Innistrad. Again, the neonate was actually undervalued a lot in the actual limited environment because it was just a one one for one. But the menace trigger ability is actually very good in the early game. Now Neonate did have the mid-game viability of being able to discard a card then draw a card, but I think Flame Blade Adept's gonna have a lot of constant interaction with his fire breathing. And with that extra point of toughness, he's definitely gonna be able to trade up in combat. And I think that is great. So keeping with red, let's talk on Crop Crasher. Two colorless and one red mana for 3-2 red minotaur. Again, with haste. And you also may exert the card as it attacks. When you do, target creature can't block this turn. Talk about aggressive overkill. And if you modern players, you actually have a new minotaur to play with, but the value in this card is pretty ridiculous, and it looks like the exert ability is actually shaping up to be pretty insane. However, I would carefully choose whenever you exert your creature, especially when there are multiple blockers on the field, because exert only happens when you attack, not when they declare blockers. So you attack, you exert it if you want to, it's optional, but then you pick a creature that they can't block with. If they have another creature, they can block with that creature. So I would think about that when you're attacking in to make sure you're getting off your corrected traded blocks. My thoughts on red so far is that it's very aggressive, and I think exert is the perfect ability to put into red. However, However, Exert also has a terrible downside, and not being able to attack or block each turn could tell the difference between life and death. Next up, we've got a familiar mechanic with a new twist. Limits of Solidarity is three colorless and one red mana for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. The card also has cycling for two colorless mana. Taking control of creatures in limited is the long lost pastime of red, and something that you should do near the end of the game to kind of finish the game off. It's especially a salt in the wound type of moment whenever you take their creature for your own and then swing with it. The only downside here is that most of these cards are only three mana and not four, but cycling in the early game is actually very important, so I think the trade off is fair. Again, cycling is deceptively good, so be sure to use it while you're in the drafting and limited format. But this card would probably never see standard or modern play. Okay, remember how we talked just a moment ago about the downsides of Exert? Well, here's a card to alleviate that. Jero's Resolve is a one mana white instant. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to it this turn. It also has cycling for two mana. So this is a great combat trick for opponents when they're attacking in and you have an exerted creature on the field. You can untap that trade with them and also keep your creature. You also have the ability in the late game to be able to cycle this just in case you don't need this combat trick at the time. A red-white exert untap ability deck in limited may actually be pretty good. Not sure about the standard viability here, but untapping creatures in this format is actually better than most. So we may actually see some cards that do this. Okay, moving on, we have Anointer Priest, a one colorless, one white mana, one three human cleric that has the ability whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. It also has the Embalm ability for three colorless and one white mana. And again, Embalm is only a sorcery that can be activated on your turn, by the way. It comes back as a zombie human cleric, one three with the same exact ability. So this sort of tells me that in limited, there's probably like a mummification token strategy that, that will be in play. Probably black white mummification. That would be cool. As far as standard and everything else goes, I'm not sure. It's still too soon. But usually gaining life in any format isn't that great. Unless you have cards in the format where when you gain life, you win the game, or when you reach a particular life threshold, you actually can deal damage to your opponent, just like Aether Flux Reservoir. And we actually have two cards in standard right now that do that. So 
maybe we'll see something happen. Lastly, we've got Nest of Scarabs. Does anyone else get like the 1999's The Mummy feel from this? This is two colorless and one black mana for an enchantment. Whenever you put a negative one negative one counter on a target creature, create that many one one black insect tokens. Okay, so here's Crocodile of the Crossing's black card for synergy. So if you have this enchantment on the board with Crocodile of the Crossing, bring it into play, put a negative one negative one counter on a creature you control, create a one one insect, seems pretty good. So perhaps there's a black green strategy in limited environment with this kind of ability going back and forth. That would actually be really flavorful and cool. The only downside to this card I would say as far as standard viability would probably be the negative one negative one counter specificity. I wish it had just said counters because there is counters everywhere with energy and all that stuff these days. I know that would be too good, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but that is it for today. What did you guys think? There are for sure a lot of synergies going on in the strategies and I really like that. In my mind right now, red and white aggro is probably winning, but it's still too soon to know. As always, like the video if you liked it, leave a comment below on what cards you thought were really good, and subscribe for more MDGO Traders content in the future.